All right, so we have a problem about pipelining. Um, so let me read the text to the question. Uh, in this question, we assume a basic five-stage risk pipeline the corresponding ISA for the arithmetic operations. Assume that the first register to be the destination uh, register and the other two are the operands. So for example, if you have, if you have um, add R3, R2, R1 instruction, that means register R3 stores the result of adding the contents of uh, two other operand registers, R2 and R1. So the question is, how would the timing look like uh, would look like for the following instructions in the pipeline if we use bypassing or forwarding um, technique. Um, uh, the question also asked me to use stalls, bubbles to solve the data or structural hazards, if any. Um, even though you use forwarding, you know, we already know that sometimes forwarding and by bypassing cannot help us. So in those cases, we, we, we are allowed to use uh, some stalls. Uh, pipeline stalls. Question is, uh, just draw the time timeline and what is uh, the average uh, cycle per instruction CPI. Okay, so for the first instruction, as you can guess, that there is no problem because there's no instruction before um, that it comes before that instruction. So therefore, there's, there would be uh, the possibility of having any type of hazard is just zero. So we're going to have to put all these five stage. Uh, uh, you know stages of the pipeline here so there's an instruction fetch if you recall um, and then the next day is the instruction decode we could use D for that and then the execution and then the memory and finally the write back so all these five stages and we will basically look forward to uh, to see if uh, the rest of the instructions will have um, those stages you know in line without any stalls um, using forwarding uh, the next instruction is store instruction. Uh, let me remind you how the store works. There's this R4 which contains an address. You add 8 to this address to calculate the final address. <clears throat> to that address you store the contents of R3. So you need the contents of R3 before you write anything to the memory. So before the memory you have to have the contents of R3 ready. Unfortunately R3 is written at the end of the write back so even though you start here with uh, a fetch cycle, because we know that the every fetch comes, uh, you know, one cycle after, so that's due to the pipelining. Um, so the next stage is decode. Well, you can decode. Uh, don't have any problem here. Um, and then the execution is there for address calculation, right? It's not just a user addition or multiplication here, but uh, address calculation. Nothing to do with the R three, but then. Uh, before you go to memory, you need to wait for uh, R3, right? R3 needs to be ready, um, but that R3, the contents of R3, would be ready after the write back uh, stage if you don't have any forwarding. But if you allow some forwarding, you can put memory here and then and then write back here. But then let's use another color uh, to signify how this forwarding is handled here, okay? So that is for forwarding, okay? Because after the memory, the R3 contents, um, you know, is ready, uh, already ready in those pipeline registers, which we haven't drawn here explicitly. Uh, but it's actually forwarded from here to here in the next clock cycle and would be ready in one of these registers in the pipeline. So they can be actually forwarded uh, to the input of the memory. Okay, it's like a feedback, okay, back to the memory um, with an extra multiplexer. Uh, you can get that value, which is going to be the contents of our tree. So the forwarding can help you here um, and allows you not to put any stalls okay, in the pipeline and saves you time. Next is a load instruction. Uh, you start again with a fetch and then decode without any problems. But after the decode, you need, um, as you can see, you need R3. And R3 is going to be ready. Um, because it's going to be ready um, at, at the end of the memory here, uh, as you can see, so you can use forwarding to get the value again, which is the most up-to-date value of R3. Um, so you can still continue your usual five-stage pipeline without any stalls, okay? But, of course, you have to allow some forwarding from here again to here now, okay? So this is actually an ad another feedback uh, wire that is now coming um, from out of the memory to the input of the execution, okay, with, an, with the help of a multiplexer, okay. 
So that is also um, um, again um, is is going was going to cause any stalls in the pipeline, but now with the help of the forwarding, uh, we can actually now get rid of that delay. Um, the next instruction is subtraction operation. Um, the subtraction operation uses R4 and R1, so you need to have R4 ready, okay, uh, before you put them into an execution state. So let's start with F, okay, the instruction fetch and then instruction decode. The next is execution, but before you start execution, you need to get this R4 ready, okay? And unfortunately, R4 is not ready at this stage, and the forwarding will not help you because R4 will be ready at the end of this memory block here, okay? Because we're basically loading information from the memory, okay? So there's no way the forwarding will solve this problem, okay? Um, it's just to, due to because it's, it's because of this instruction, load instruction takes uh, that many clock cycles to finish its uh, original operation so that the contents of R4 will be ready at the end of the memory. So you need a stall here, okay, which is inevitable at this stage. Um, and then you have to put your execution uh, block here and with the help of forwarding, of course, where you have a memory, uh, output of the memory can be connected to input of the execution unit um, such that the R4 will be ready at the output of this memory block so you can forward that to the input of the execution to get this R4 value which is going to be up to date you know um, and finally the write back uh, I'm sorry the memory memory and write back okay so that basically finishes your five stage pipeline for this particular instruction Okay, let's continue. So you've got a fetch here for the multiplication operation. This bubble is actually is is already a you know a stall which which basically inherited from the previous instruction. So you cannot put anything here because it's already been uh, you know, delayed. Um, so therefore, the next one is decode here, uh, and then here you need R three, right? And R three needs to be a, a, the most up to date value, which is going to be clearly. Um, uh, up to date after the execution unit of the previous, uh, you know, uh, stage, uh, execution stage. Okay, so therefore you can put a E here, okay, without any problems, but of course using the forwarding here, right? You need the forwarding here uh, in order to use this execution. Without forwarding, you have to wait until you hit the right back stage, unfortunately, okay? So keep that in mind because you need R3 and there's R3 is the output uh, is the destination register for the previous instruction subtract okay and then the next is uh, memory and then the next is write back and finally and finally we have the store instruction okay so you cannot start here because it's already uh, stalled uh, then you can start from here with F the fetch and then decode and then execution execution is now again for address calculation here right this is address calculation okay and uh, the next is is memory so this store actually is going to you know this address this is the address now you calculate that as feed, feed into the memory but you need the data data is r6 and r6 needs to be ready uh, but previous instruction actually writes something to r6 so that means the um, um, the execution stage at the output of this execution, the R6 is or was already ready, and it's going to be propagated to the next register in the, uh, the next pipeline stage, right? At the output of memory now, so you can safely uh, put a memory operation here and write back operation here, provided that you have an appropriate uh, forwarding, okay, between the memory input and output, okay? So that finishes the uh, original, the total uh, timeline of how these instructions are handled in the pipeline uh, with exceptionally one single stall which was inev inevitable so therefore we basically have to wait the whole pipeline one clock cycle so we lost one clock cycle so therefore we use 11 clock cycles okay for six instruction executions okay executions so therefore we are CPI okay can be calculated to be 11 over 6 which is a little less than um, 2 okay which is which is good if we haven't used any bypassing and forwarding for this particular uh, question 
It's not very hard to uh, calculate. I'm just going to give you the answer, but you can go ahead and do it yourself that it would take 22 clock cycles instead for six instructions. Um, therefore, your CPI would be 22 over 6, okay, which is the double the CPI of uh, the one with bypassing.